So happiness equals reality minus expectations. Right. And let me break it down really quick. Yes. So um, if you have zero expectations, much like I do, mm -hmm. then happiness equals reality. My reality is just, it's, it's sheer happiness. Welcome back to the Smart yes. Nonsense Podcast. This is episode, we don't do episodes anymore. We don't. We've done so many, this is so much fun. But what do we talk about on Smart Nonsense? We talk about entrepreneurship, self-development, and challenging norms. Pop. This was almost the first week since June or July that we didn't record an episode. And we're giving the people a jambalaya <laughs> episode, baby. So they should tune in on YouTube. Subscribe. You don't. You can't get a word in. No, keep talking. You forgot how to do this. Show. Yeah, yeah. Subscribe in places and click the like button. The the, the I feel up like hand. We're sitting kind of far apart. I also I can't it's, be my most confident self. No, this. you can't bring this it, up. I want to take it off. <laughs> All right, that's there's the plug. Right, watch it on YouTube because Belky, you're number one. I'm number one. Um, you should go watch this video on YouTube. You should subscribe. You should let us know how we're doing. You should write a review. Is that four call to actions and I'm supposed to give one? I wonder if people are going to start unsubscribing. They're like, you know. Well, every time I come, I've just got something more stupid going on. <laughs> just come this is to a see good the cause, evolution. Though. Girls De on the run. I did a video for them and then they sent me this, this swag. Is, and is the opposite mouthing? of evolution devolution? Yeah, of course. Really? Devolving? Yeah, sure. Devolution. Am I devolving? I've never heard that word. Yes, you are, but I've never heard that word. I don't know if people use it like that. Devolution. Oh. Degrade. What do you want to talk about today? Uh, oh, can we really quick, really quick first? Um, because this is this is hot pod news. You told me you're like Belky yesterday. You're like, have you heard about this Call Her Daddy podcast? That's you and ruined I, my segue. Because you're not okay, talking. Here's my, <laughs> It's my segue. I ruined your segue. <laughs> yeah, you can't plan out a segue. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta leave pauses so that people just like the pauses. So segue <laughs> is here. You <laughs> said people do not like <clears throat> forty minutes of pause. You've no, gotta it's say the something. slow it. So degrade, right? You said the word degrade. <laughs> I had it all planned out. You just didn't let me get to it because you talk over me. Degrade in the Call Her Daddy podcast. We we're talking about we. <laughs> they were talking about how. They were texting this guy and they're like trying to be I, call her daddy podcast first. It's two hot girls in New York that are sexually promiscuous. And I was really skeptical. I'm a, not a fan of Barstool. I think I don't know. It's just goofy to me. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'll listen. To, I'll listen for two minutes. You know, if this is the hot new thing, I can give it two minutes of my time before I just trash it. And oh, my God, couldn't get him out of bed. 35 minutes later, I, I subscribed. I subscribed. I literally subscribed 35 minutes later. They're brilliant. They're brilliant. Yeah, they're so shameless about everything when normally people are like scared to talk yeah. about these topics. And that's, I, I, I want that. I crave that. So they were talking about how they're texting this guy said like, oh, they want to be like, I don't know. They, they want to talk dirty to a guy. And it's like, I want you to degrade me. They're like degrade? What the fuck kind of This is how is that like, evolve. Uh, well, you said degrade for some, I guess, devolved uh, degrade. Okay. But they, they talk about all this raunchy shit and it's just so entertaining. I think it's their vibe. I'm trying to analyze it. And I told you this before and you're like, pod, pod, save it for the podcast. I want to figure out how to make a great podcast because clearly, <laughs> clearly it's not working. But it's something like their chemistry is on fire. They're just back and forth. I told you this a long time ago. Pop. Narcotics. I've been telling you, stimulants, okay? There is a reason I made a video called Turning on the Switch. There is a reason I come here with, um, what do you call that when you, when you chop something? Uh, like oh, I, minced? No, pop. No. Cut, Sexy cut. I'm, I'm, I've, got, I've got here a cup of coffee that's cut with water. I cut my coffee with water to have- Oh, it's kind of cool. To have more it's of it. A, I like the way they use oh, that. Oh, the pepper. Talk about cutting it with water. No. The, ca the capsaicin. The, the capsaicin. Oh, we don't talk about the capsaicin okay. anymore. Okay. This was, this was just a, a, how long was that? An hour. I was a little it bit Had drunk. to be an hour. It had to be an hour. We were trying, uh, we can't go there. Last night. So here's the question, right? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> take them there. We have, you know, what's the, what's the podcast that's like, uh, or the YouTube series of like hotter, hot wings. Spicy foods. Hot or not. 
<laughs> Not the app. Um, first we feast. It's made by first hot ones. Hot ones. Yes. Hot one. Yes. <laughs> That's Stick. deductive reasoning. Hot ones. Right. So they have all these hot sauces, and they're at different Scoville, which is basically <laughs> stop it. Scoville this is absurd. You you take a little sample of whatever the pepper is. You take that sample and you dilute it with some water until people that are drinking it no longer think it's hot. Kind. That's layman's terms. Yeah. 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 We're speak. I don't know if we're speaking to experts in Scoville. Can but we? Why don't we pitch the question before we give them our, our answer? Do whatever you want, because then maybe they could write a review with the answer. <laughs> <laughs> what we want to know. This is why we fought for an hour last night. What we want to know is, let's say one jalapeno is three thousand Scovilles. Is it additive? Are two jalapenos six thousand Scovilles? I don't. I don't think so. No. Scoville is just like the chemical makeup of this substance. Mm -hmm. So I don't know my it's periodic density. table. It's like density of spice. It's capsaicin per sugar water, basically. Uh, yeah, because capsaicin is the, the hot shit yeah. in, in the pepper. Yes. So it's like how much capsaicin is in a... What are we doing right now? A, a certain... If, you and I were on the same page. It was it was our third roommate David who was like no no no. I thought no. you weren't going to mention him. And I think he ended up being right at the end of the night. But well, Scoville <laughs> can't give it up. Scoville is just this is the number. But if you eat a lot more of that, then it's just going to be hotter. That's just a fact. But the Scoville is still the same. Oh, maybe that's the answer. Right? Yeah, you're putting Scoville is always the same. On. But if you eat more of the shit, it's going to be hotter because now you have more of that All capsaicin right. in your I mouth. Can check that one off the list, and that one wasn't even on my list. <laughs> What else did you have? You, you got a whole fallacy last night. That was a good one. We're reading alchemy. We were supposed to do that on the podcast today. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> every fallacy. time I say something, you literally close your eyes. And you're like, I think it's a form of blocking. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, it's the most special blocking. You're like ever blocking seen. my words from hitting you smack dab in the face. Um, <laughs> so just to recap, this God, podcast I'm is. I'm really hot. I want to put on my shirt because I'm not my most confident self <laughs> no, no, no. in this shirt. It's Embrace tight. It. It's small. It's really tight. We're going to, we need to ch channel, channel our inner call her daddy. That was me summing that up. Okay, the gambler's fallacy. Well, basically last night we were playing poker with the friends and I lost really fast twice. And I said, mm -hmm. YOLO, gambler's fallacy. I've got nothing to lose. I just read a book about poker. Like might as well play a third time. What, what's the gambler's fallacy? The gambler's fallacy is that like, Luck is 50-50. So I had been getting all that bad luck, bad luck, bad luck, bad luck. If I just uh, buy in, I can, I can win my money back because I'm due for good luck. Okay. And I was. And I took everybody's money at the oh. table. You almost did. Yeah, and you then I lost a lot. You had them on the ropes. Drunk. You shouldn't drink and play poker. Belky, you, you had like $92 out of the total $100. 100. <laughs> and then somehow Tomas, who was on the podcast so? about 10 episodes ago, he wait, just wait, weaseled whoa, whoa, his whoa, way back. whoa, whoa, whoa. Tomas asked us yesterday, you didn't even tell him that his podcast episode came out. <laughs> He's like, wait, you were supposed to send that to me for what? all our future guests. When we say you're going to get to screen the episode before it comes <laughs> out, you better believe you're not going to see I, it till it's published. I, I, did we? I think, oh, I hope we edited that one because I, I know he wanted to. Here's the thing with the podcast. All right, we got a system going in the background. I just saw Beery's got posted today. Yeah, it did. Shit's just getting out there. I don't even know what's going on anymore, but that's part of what I wanted to cover, right? I've lost touch. The, the podcast, this is barely shooting one a week right now. It's a disaster. I don't know what happened. I think our standards got too high. Honestly, I was listening to an early one and we sounded more like the Call Her Daddy hosts. We did. It was nonsensical. There were some smarts. You swore a lot more, which mm. was good and bad. It was funny, but it was... You saying I'm not funny anymore? No, you are, but this... We leveled... <laughs> We leveled this podcast the fuck up, and it got super serious. You were getting some serious guests. Steph was probably my favorite. But, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, I like the Aussies, oh, too. I so, like them a lot. Noah was great. Noah was great. You're listening, everyone. So here's, <laughs> here's what I'm trying to... Because be I, I mentioned this before. Call her daddy, right? Dissect why that's amazing. It's their vibe. Then there's my first million, which is incredible. Steph helps with that whole endeavor with Sam Parr and Sean Puri. I think that's how you say his last name. 
But their podcast, their vibe is so dope. They're talking about cool business ideas, which is just interests us all the time. I'm trying to figure out what they're doing, what their little angle is. I don't know what the hell our angle is other than just we like talking to each other. I'm it's thinking, marketing though, right? There is nothing. I don't know. Is there is is my first million significantly better than what we're doing? I don't know. They have the ears though. We just I just blacked out for like <laughs> five seconds. Uh, <laughs> you need narcotics. I might. I got my water though. No, but they show up on my first million sometimes, and they're like, "All right, what do you got? Well, what do you got today?" Like it's it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This highly polished thing. They got their sticky notes and they got their little notebook and they don't talk beforehand, just like this right now. But they're also both super successful and people trust them. Whereas we're just clowning That's what around. It is. It's the trust. It might be. I'm also thinking, well, here's the thing, right? I had the last couple of days, I had these these reckonings. And I like when you get into the cadence and it sounds like this. Now I do it in my videos. I really, <laughs> oh yeah. I really want to take I've just been working. Should we my just shirt take off our shirts off? Really, I'd be no. more confident without this shirt on. Mm-hmm. That's by the way, that is nothing against girls on the run. It is just a ta- uh, a very tight shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the disclaimer it's a huge disclaimer i didn't even pick it up uh it, they're all about do you want to shout them out or anything i think i did at the about? beginning let's just uh, link that video okay. i got first place and yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it go, was virtual watch or whatever. well i'm trying to figure out if they gave everyone the number one because it was virtual they knew you'd wear it on a podcast two weeks that, later yeah so i had this reckoning <laughs> the first reckoning all right we have our friend ice who we played poker with last night he was on the podcast way back and episode 1920. And he wants to go to New York. He's trapped in St. Louis. He's got to get out of that bubble. We know he's not living his... his The like... The his like, perfect life? Not perfect. There's some term for no, it. His like Tim Ferriss, what would you be doing if you died in six yeah. months life? And we know he just wants to work for Arsenal well, as I'd, some sort of yeah. analyst. But whatever. He'll go to New York. Maybe one day he'll move to London. But he's kind of interested in the idea and i love new york i love new york i love all the people Mm, mm, there's a lot about new york that i like (laughs) chicago is kind of dope i like chicago but i'm like i would probably prefer new york even though belky's here i know i trade up i get eyes there we go figure out the podcast is that what you're doing you're phasing out the podcast so it's just easier to go to new york (laughs) that was my plan right but then i talked to Raphael, and (laughs) who is Raphael? I know almost everybody you talk to. I know every single person you talk to. I do not know a Raphael. <laughs> no one knows Raphael. So Raphael, <laughs> he's this little juju accountant. I, I, don't, I don't know why I call everyone little. But like he's this dope accountant in New York who I called because I, I needed to Things talk this are through. funnier if you imagine him to just be like this little <laughs> house elf. <laughs> he might be. Yeah. I, I loved, he was super honest with me because I'm like, uh, Raphael. I want to go to New York. And he's like, why do you want to go to New York? And I'm like, well, I love, I love just the, the life there. And the he's like, hustle, you're, the you're already in a city, like city's dope. New York is the most expensive shit around. Like if you're, there's still little tax schemes, right? Where becoming S corps and stuff. New York's like, fuck that. We're going to tax all businesses at 10% if it's a corporation, which I would want to be. And I will be if I stay here. But so basically it's like, say you make a hundred thousand in New York, you're going to pay 40k 50k fifty thousand dollars a year in taxes like what in that's that's everything that's your personal state federal yeah that's that's like everything but like can you imagine fifty thousand dollars just gone that is why i i quoted this to you one time um i was like don't get mad at me oh how did it go it's kind of like a Oh, uh, something about the tax codes. Like, don't don't be mad because I took the time to learn the tax codes and mm. use them to my favor. Um, like there there is a reason. Well, we don't have to get into it. Yeah, I think the way most people get around this little issue is they they would have two houses, right? So they live in New York, but they also claim residence in like Texas, where there yeah. aren't any mm-hmm. taxes, state or local. So that's how people get around it, but. We don't have the money for two residences. We don't have So I would just be stuck there paying 40, 50K in taxes or whatever it is, wherever my income's at. And it's like, that, that's just mind-blowing to me. Whereas, say a Texas is like, 
20k or less and here it's like maybe 30 at most so basically i realized i'm like i i don't know if new york is worth it it's a great city but also if i just took that money and put it into the podcast doubled yeah. tripled you quadrupled could literally down pay people to come on here <laughs> like yeah we marketing budget like, two thousand dollars to come on your no podcast. we don't need that money i think um i don't know i don't know why why are you in such a rush to get out of chicago new york's the dream right new you know i like people in the streets what if you spent thing. six months in each or something i don't know how it works i gotta investigate well, thinking more. about taxes but gave me low t so i know it really taxes fuck. suck all right. They suck. You know what sucks the most about them? I go back and forth with, with my dad on this. It's like when you're self-employed and you're grinding and you're hustling and you don't have a lot of money and you're trying to make things work and then you, you know, uh, create some amount of, of, of wealth or freedom for yourself. It then sucks to lose 50% of that to what? Like pretty shitty roads, school systems that don't work. Yeah, I'm not force that's obviously fucked. COVID central. Uh, we're we're you know so much of our taxes goes to defense, and I'm like, eh. right. So let's get depressing. So <laughs> no, not depressing because guess what? Because of the taxes, there's a really good chance that I'll just stay in Chicago forever. That's great. So great for the podcast. That's great. That's great for the podcast. Um, disclaimer: I, like we don't really know how those things work. Um, taxes. Yeah, but we're trying uh, to learn. Raphael kind of did. Okay, that's good. So reckoning number two. Numero dos. Agency versus Smart Nonsense Podcast. I've been racking my People brain. People don't know what the agency is. Oh, true. Okay. So Can basically, I change my shirt while you do this? I want to take mine off too. We don't make cuts on this though. Okay. That's the problem. All right. I'll stay. Where <laughs> so the agency, right? We have this podcast and we have a little system going. It's been uh, not... The focus hasn't been on it recently, but it will return. Basically like... We shoot the content, but we have awesome team around us to help us put it out in video and audio and blog posts, etc. Right. So we show up, we turn the lights on, we hit record on the video cameras and on the audio, we upload everything, and then the rest it's, is taken care of. It's, it's history automated. from there. And so I basically took this system and I went back to my previous employer, you can say, and I was like, hey, we have the system. You want to do it X amount of money a month. These are the metrics we'll hit. Bam. And like, I'm confident we can hit them because we have a dope system. So now I'm in a place. Shout out to the team. Teams just hauling ass. They are carrying everything. Everything. It's, it's like everything. we keep sending these beast mode memes in our Slack chat because they're just all in beast mode 24-7. That's awesome. They might burn out and die, but I'm going to try not to because we're hiring another video editor. So the point is. I got one for you. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, come on. Bell, you can't. What's the point? What's so the, the point, point is, all right. Yeah, let's get to the punch. We lost the nonsense. The the punch is that now I'm in a place where like doing well enough and it's like we have this potential I don't want to say like like a really good business model. Here's here. the deal. Every single guest who has come on here or any content creator we talk to, any of these kind of B2B business businesses that we talk to, they're all drooling when they hear about this. They're like, "I want that content is hard." And it's everywhere. It, it's and it's everywhere. A lot of demand for content because everything is online right now, especially COVID. So basically, it's like if we just took what we did for Smart Nonsense, what we're doing right now for that other creator, and just got a bunch of other creators to get on, I mean, it, it could be a serious business. It'd be a lot of work, but you could also do very well and everyone involved could do very well. So that, that was my big consideration. But then the other consideration is like, now I'm comfortable enough where maybe I just take the remaining energy that's not going into this creator that I'm working with right now and just devoted that to smart nonsense, built the hell out of that. And then who knows with my full energy into it and like this now improved team, because now we have graphics and everything. This could be something gnarly. Oh, are we picking up like the motion graphics on smart nonsense too? We, we could, we, mm -hmm. we could. So the, another reason people should go watch this on YouTube. Yeah, it's going to be dope. So, Although I, I, I say that, Super hypocritically, I don't watch podcasts on YouTube, but it's there. I do. If yeah, I'm oh, I'm one of those premium. consumers. You can listen to it in your pocket, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just it's like a podcast for me. Yeah. So that's so, the well, thing. What's the plan? Because David and I are kind of like your sales reps. We're just kind of kicking it around. I don't know what you cons are doing. <laughs> David's pretty close. 
Um, I got an interesting lead. And then you're just system king. <laughs> yeah. But system is just a lot of it's a lot of work. I would rather have these little media assets. We just keep our team small. We're comfortable enough. As long as we keep getting paid for good work, which we will, we're good. Just about growing smart nonsense. I think that would be killer. So I am leaning towards. That's the D. Oh, dude. Remember my first million? They were talking about their Black Friday sale. Yeah. He has an email list, I think, of 250,000. Mm -hmm. They did some little Black Friday hack. Maybe we can link it down below. It's a great episode. Yeah. Generated seven figures over the weekend in profit, profit, profit. Yeah, the hack was like they pretended that there was some accidental email sent of like, oh, we should drop it 50%. And Wait, it, like, was a, it, was some, it was like an internal company email right. talking about a Black Friday sale. And like somehow it got leaked, leaked. or like got exposed. And so all these people like thought they were getting some special deal. And then they went on Twitter and they're like, oh, shoot, some of you may have gotten this email, uh, but we'll honor it while we're, we're removing it, basically. So the they, put a, they put a, a, a time, they put a, a hard deadline. time on a deadline on it. And he did this like a week before Black Friday. So they hit that sale. And then a week later, when Black Friday actually happened, they hit it with another sale. And they both did this. So they, they built this product or their email newsletter, whatever. They come up with this little email hack that probably took them 30 minutes. They blast it out and they make over a million dollars. That's why the next podcast that we're supposed to do that's today. That's leverage. That is, that's twice. really good leverage. Email is just killer. The podcast um, we're supposed to do today. Yeah, Alchemy by Rory Sutherland. Yeah. It, it talks about that. It's like the product's the same. The product did not change. What changed was the sales, the exposure, everything that just came out of this good little trick or tactic that they used. Red Bull. Yeah. And so that's maybe that's the thing with the podcast. We just need better marketing. I don't know what the fuck it is. But Dude, I don't know. I, it's so hard. I feel like I've been running in place on YouTube. Granted, again, I'll, I'll write it off. as like it's a video diary for me. But like finding people is hard. Finding eyeballs is hard. I know. Holding attention. But, but now we can focus on that. So what I'm saying is if I, I didn't build this massive media agency and I just focused on mm. my one client and smart nonsense, I think we could do something crazy. That's my point. So, so, so your point is I've you're kind of pulling out of the agency idea to dive back into smart nonsense. I, th I think I got the juju again because the confluence of, you know what? Screw New York. I'm going to stay in Chicago. I now have more money. I have more resources just to dump into smart nonsense, time included. What more money does this podcast need? It doesn't, but I'm thinking like, I don't know. I want to try rim lights. shit. That's it needs a rim need. light. My hair just goes right into the depths of the background but that's the thing like i well, want to try different okay. formats let david and i at least have one agency deal we i don't want to run that shit we don't eat here okay. we don't have lunch i know i'm i'm the only one making money around here actually david makes money you're yeah. the only one not making i'm money. the only one not making money <laughs> just getting <laughs> returns and i'm from the cameras. only one spending money how does that's that true. make sense you're buying all my dinners you're buying my books yeah i bought you dinner like every day this week <sighs> okay um, agency. It's exciting. That's cool. I, I don't have the answer. If you have the answer to like how more people watch smart nonsense, by the way, we love doing this. Oh, it's here's, not, here's it's one not of my gonna... considerations. Cause I'm thinking of formats that are cool. And I watch a lot of these reacting to videos mm. or like a GQ breakdown when it's like Jocko Willink looks at different movies and stuff. And I remember in my first million with Andrew Wilkinson, who started this company called tiny and they basically invest. They're like venture capital, but value. Like it's small scale venture capital. He just comes in, buys these uh, value companies, replaces the CEO. Like he doesn't do anything. He basically just like exchanges the CEO with someone dope and then just runs with it. Basically, they didn't talk about his life, his bio, his story, everything like that. They just kind of like did a quick preface. And then they're like, all right, here's some cool ideas. Let's just get your thoughts on these. And so it's kind of like that, that breakdown on YouTube of the it's guest? like, this is the expert. Yeah, so Whose thoughts? Andrew's. It's like, Andrew, you're a smart oh, businessman. Okay. You know how to invest. Mm -hmm. Let's throw out some crazy ideas and just like get your, get your take on it. And so it's like taking these experts and rather than talking about their life, and this is what I happened with Steph at the end, like she got excited when we were talking about different trends and just cool industries. So just figure out what their expertise is and then like, Talk about pop culture related to that. Oh. So it's like, say we have Sam Paron, who we're referring to. He has the My First Million. Oh, okay. It's like, 
uh, rather than talk about, oh, Sam, like you grew up in St. Louis. Like, what was that like? Then you went to Silicon Valley. We just touch on it, but then Cut get the into like, yo, Sam, did you hear about Slack selling? Like if you were Slack, would you sell or would you just try and grow this thing to like twice the size? Oh, current events. That's what you mean just, by pop culture. Okay. Yeah. Or it doesn't have to be super cool. current event. Just something of like take their expertise and apply it to something. And like maybe it's media would you, on screen. Would you give them that uh, beforehand or would you just hit them with it? I'd probably like, hey, these are some cool ideas. If you have any you want to talk about. But like people are just tired of the podcast format where it's like, here's my life story. Mm hmm. Let's talk about what it was like from six to 12 years old. Mm -hmm. People don't like that. Yeah, because all these people have been on every podcast. Right. And Tim Ferriss is the best at it. So, yeah, you're not you're not going to beat Tim Ferriss in his own game. So I'm thinking like there's got to be some other format that appeals to people that like Seth Godin, for example, you're in contact, you're emailing him right now. If we had this unique angle of like, oh, Seth, here are some really cool things we'd love your opinion on. We think it'd be a fun podcast. That's something he probably hasn't heard before. Do you ask for 15 minutes? I don't know what the really short is. format. It also, mm. it has to be really shareable. Like I told you with Call Her Daddy. Like there's something about it that's like, you text your friend, holy shit, have you heard this? Right. I literally shared it with a person this morning. I share it like one I person I texted Athena. I was like, have you heard the Call Her Daddy the podcast? The Gluck, Gluck 9000. Oh it's my God. It's crazy. But Dude. there's nothing, I don't think there's anything incredibly shareable about this. Or my YouTube channel. But what I do see that's shareable is, like I said, the GQ breakdowns or whatever, where it's some expert breaking down something that's pop culture, that's media. It's like, say Seth Godin is, go back to the Slack thing. Say he's talking about that, Slack selling. It's like Seth, from a marketing perspective, like how are they able to grow faster than anyone else online? And now you can get his opinion on something and you can have dope graphics of like, oh, well, let's look at their sales page from like a while back. And it's just, it's like totally That's a new approach to podcasts. I don't know. I'm really playing around with these different templates. You keep playing around. I like that. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I I'm take, thinking of those like Vogue, like my five essentials. My Yeah, was Vogue the thing where it's like 73 questions too? Yeah. I've seen a lot of the, just like cool shit that people aren't doing in the podcast world because there are a lot of podcasts. But what's a new format? What's a new spin on podcasts? And podcast? you want to bring, okay. And we have the video medium, which is why like, I think we can talk about pop culture because we can have those graphics come up and do cool things. And then what? You, you, how, how do you get more eyeballs? You rely on their Well, it's network? just going to be more shareable, I think. Rather than who's going to share Seth Godin, this is his story as a high schooler. Right. I get that. It's like, oh, this is like something you, you see on the news. Dude. Yeah. And you have to get something from them that nobody's ever heard from them before. Which is why I think if we have them on the podcast, like three days before, we just, I, I don't like things that are super like current eventy, but I'm sure there's a lot of topics they haven't talked about because no one explores formats because the entire world is just too scared to explore and dabble and try these new things because they're big corporations. Podcasts started to do it, but we're all still the same format for the most part. Yeah. Whereas now it's starting to be like Spotify having video on their so it's podcast. shifting toward video. It's shifting towards video. And I think we got to take advantage of that timing wise to come up with a new format that, that mends both of them both together. Of them. I was going to say, because I'm, I'm purely audio listener, it still has to be it's got to be both enough for me to listen to. As I think, the graphics would just improve the overall thing. But Spotify's dope. Have you tried Spotify mm -hmm. with like Joe Rogan? No. It's so, it's so seamless. Like you're listening and you're like, oh, they're talking about some video on screen. You just take out your phone and it's... Does it rip through battery and data? I, I, well, once you turn off the video, it goes back this to like is interesting just audio. To me. I'm just trying to think of what happens when I text somebody a podcast because it's rare. That's what, you, that's what we need. I send a lot of my first million on a lot of Caller Daddy. And that's because my first million is really smart and Call Her Daddy is really not. And it's funny. They're at it's shit that no one else will talk. Well, Call Her Daddy, no one else will talk about. It, both of them are in their own niches. Like, I don't. There's no other podcast that talks about cool business ideas that's fun to listen to. That I've that's heard. my first million. That's my first million. They're unique in that aspect, and they're both successful, so you trust them. And then those girls, they have their credibility because they fuck a lot, and they just talk about these raunchy subjects like no one else. So they're in their own niche. No one is competing with them because 
they're just what hot girls talk about this. So we don't really have that right now because a lot of people talk about books and like stuff and it's kind of a cool vibe. But if, right. The only thing we'd be selling right now is our personalities. And it's which like, is debatable. It's like. As in that's that's who, that, who yeah. the fuck are we? Like, yeah, yeah, that's my point. That's our our niche right now is our personalities. And it's got to be more. And like everyone has are like personality. Average. OK, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> it's like the prerequisites to be a successful podcast. We, I think we, we can hit the personality at least for like a cool vibe. People will listen. With a cup of coffee, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some assumptions here. It's getting kind of boring here and there, but whatever. That's, that I think we can do. But you need like two, like a unique angle. Yeah, something else, and we don't have it. And that's why I want to focus my energy now. Instead of building an agency, focus it on what the fuck is the format that is cool as shit that no one's tried, or maybe people have tried, but they don't have the personality to, to make it successful. Yeah. Sounds good to me. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Here's the thing Do about I still Belky. get to not prep too much? Belky, Belky does. <laughs> Look at you. This is the most I've seen you prep in years. Got five bullets on that yeah. thing. I think you covered all of them. Uh, Missing one, but I don't want to talk about him. All right, good. So, yeah, Belky's just his, he's the idea guy. Right? That's all I do. I just run around screaming ideas. <laughs> They're all bad, too, so it's fucking funny. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there's a good one. I'm trying to think of you an example. You said the other day, but... that's a really good, oh, Writing letters to invite people. That's a great idea. I was going to talk about networking a little bit, but I didn't want to go everywhere. For the first time in my life, I feel like I'm actually networking. <laughs> like people, like big time people are kind of listening to me a little bit. It's crazy. It's weird. You're talking to some homies right now. That's the thing. I just, I hit them with a one-liner email and I don't want anything. Truly, in every sense of the world, I don't want word. I don't want anything. It's amazing. I never believed when people said that. I thought it was trite. Like, oh, you got to ask, but don't. Well, that's the thing. The way you're doing it is like it only takes a couple hours or whatever. You find their address and then you write an email, stamp it, and you're good. Exactly. It's not much on you. And it's like it makes you feel good because you're like, oh, I'm giving thanks out to the world. Anything on top of that is bonus. That book that came yesterday, we'll, we'll link the video. Yeah. It's fucking massive. Uh, check out the overhead shots. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just watch all the way to the end so you can see how we got this. That was fun. <laughs> So it's just like networking. We've seen people that we know who maybe we seem like they're a little bit slimy in certain aspects, but they're succeeding. Like they're, they're Who's slimy. Like there's one person that that is like talking to a lot of YouTuber influencers, like constantly hanging out with these people. Eh, forget it. But Gossip, thought poison. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you right after we hit hit stop. You know who I'm talking about. I don't. Whatever. He's the best networker we know. And, and so the idea is like, he's hacking it. I, I see it like, basically, once you make it, you're oh, so yeah. well connected. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, we, don't, when, we don't give free shout outs, so. <laughs> no free. Oh, can I shout out Leah? She's probably listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was supposed to be on my Free shout out for Leah. <laughs> Leah, this is, the, this is the halftime shout out for Leah, our number one listener. We probably. crushed her, her Spotify um your year in review or whatever. <laughs> yeah, she she binged eight episodes in a day. That's I mean you don't need eight episodes. You, you Leah, don't, but she she did it. Thank took you. one for the team. Thanks for listening. What were you saying about networking? Well, I, I have some friends I don't I, or like people that I know, and I'll see their Instagram stories, and they just hang out with other cool people, and like you just keep leveling up, and your your social circle just mm -hmm. stays like that. It'll be like, oh, you're super successful. Then you crack into this whole new group. That's like, oh, okay. Ew. He's on the same playing field. Now he can hang out. Right. It's kind of like rich kids, how they hang out that's, with rich kids. That's why I'm excited for this format you come up with. But I also bust your balls because I'm like, you've had these awesome guests and you're sitting on marketing with them that will allow you to rank up to their network, their guests, uh, other guests through them. And you just haven't done it. <laughs> yeah. But Sometimes that's fair because like, you, you get these people once. So you, you want the format to be a smash hit. Yeah. I, that's the thing. It's like really frustrating because I know, I know we can have Sam Parr on the podcast. I know there's like his friends we can have on the podcast. It's just very easy to, to navigate that world. It's just, it takes energy and time. Mm -hmm. And so that's why no agency. I got, I got my money. Now I'm, I'm <laughs> Dude, not going to starve. Sad. I'm good. And now we just, yeah, focus on building that shit. That's all I got. You got other ones? I drew some stuff. Now we're gonna think we. It's that's it, that's it. 
That's all I got too. I had an opportunity cost story. Oh, you know what I heard in Alchemy as we're listening to it? Um, it really stuck with me. It's like you can know about biases. That still doesn't mean you're going to operate under the right assumptions. And that's opportunity cost. I think you said it to me once. You're like once a, a coupon or like always. A, I, I can't yeah. kick it. But this guy with the camera just oh, that's wasting what I... both of our time. <laughs> oh, that's what we were trying to figure out the other day. What friends can you opportunity cost with? Ah. Yeah, we only get one of these a week. Let's just do 10 <laughs> hours of this shit. Well, that's the thing, right? Belky and I, we talk about these biases. We talk about opportunity costs all the time. And when I was flying back to Rhode Island, Belky was home. And I'm like, I'm not going to make Belky drive an hour there, an hour back just to bring me to the airport. I'll pay for a $30 Uber. Like, that's literally if Belky claims that his time is worth like $5,000 an hour, where the fuck he charges, supposedly. <laughs> which is absurd. But whatever he claims it to be. I should up it pretty soon. <laughs> I feel like you have to have some money coming in no. for it to have no, like people to credibility, believe it, whatever. So I'm like, all right, I'm not even going to, I'll just do it. Like no question to ask. Whereas like other people that we know, it just, maybe it's not like, it's a mindset thing. And we're just both on the same wavelength That's with what this. we were saying. Like you can't opportunity cost friends and family. That shit's priceless. You know, like we have, we were saying, we have some friends who, if you don't do an airport drop off or pick up for them, their feelings are hurt. Whereas you and I, I could be like, Dylan, take an Uber, opportunity cost. And you'd be like, yeah, you're right. I'll even split it with you. Like, I, I feel really bad now. Everyone that's driving me to the air, like even like my stepmom was taking me to the airport back from Rhode Island. I'm like, let me just, just let me Uber. Like, I don't yeah. want to like, use your time but then i look at her and she's playing solitaire so i'm like you know what there's not much opportunity <laughs> being cost so what did we come to you can opportunity cost with opportunity cost friends yeah you got to be on the same and same then wavelength. you kind of have to bite the bullet with other friends and family and just do the i i would say the right thing yeah i mean sometimes it's fun like it's fun to drive in the car and just like shoot the shit and stuff sure but there are certain instances where it's just unreasonable and for some people like you you can just tell them straight up like our relationship is generally just upfront. Like, no, fuck that. Like, yeah. Whereas other people would, would be hurt and wouldn't like it. Yeah. What's the, what's uh, the takeaway? I think that's the takeaway. Um, when, take? when, when, well, how you can take opportunity costs think, too far. I think everyone needs a little bit more opportunity costs. I think life. everyone needs a little bit more economics in life. But at the same time, Raphael yesterday talked to me for an hour. I haven't bought any of his services. I probably will because he's given so much and that's worth four thousand dollars a year over however many years so it's probably worth it for him but like in the moment it doesn't feel that way it feels like he's just like not being a douche and hanging up on me early because well, isn't that questions. his job is he just some random he's a cpa you, that you found yeah just a like he had, he's selling himself no in a sense but it didn't feel like that at all hmm. like he never like made any pitch or anything he's like yeah if you want the services but that's fine if you don't like go to texas find an account there like it's all good and I'm uh, like, oh, yeah. that, I trust you a lot now. That's really good. I probably wouldn't have given an hour, though. But maybe it works. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, That's what I'm saying. I'm like, now I'm thinking hour. So there's like certain, it's just interesting. Just have the idea of opportunity costs. I think people, I even talked with Noah about this. He's like, people don't value their time as highly as they should. Granted, most people don't have other opportunities in life that are amazing, like a podcast in the background mm -hmm. they can focus on. So maybe it's just. But, but also like going for a walk is an amazing opportunity. Mm. And and true boredom is an amazing opportunity. I know you like Dude, fell apart last week. I yeah, I should we talk about that? I don't think okay. My mom always would say, like, Dylan, how are you not depressed? Or she's like asking me if I'm depressed, which it's kind of scary because now you're like, oh shit, is this like intervention? Am I depressed? <laughs> and that's the but, self fulfilling thing. We talked right, about it. It's that. weird. It's a weird little catch twenty two shit. But I I never actually felt that way. And then last week, and I don't know if it's depression, I don't want to like uh, diminish that. But I was so bored. I had no purpose in life, no meaning. I was just on my phone and I, I didn't want to listen to any podcasts. I normally listen to like five a day. I didn't listen to any podcasts, no audiobooks. I had no friends because they're all working. It was just yeah. like, I think that there's nothing to, to just do. How important those keystone habits are. I had the habits. I worked out in the morning, but right after the workout, I'm like, I got nothing else to do. I don't know. That happened to me in like, but April. also I didn't have the studio. Like I was on a bed working my laptop and it was just frustrating. I was, 
I was like, what is the point of life? And then I'm like, I just got to go to New York. That's where all the opportunity is. But then I come back here and we have so much fucking fun every night. It's, it's way, absurd. It's way, last night, I, I must have said it 15 times. I was like, this is way too much fun. I don't get it. It's just way too much fun. And it's stressful at times, right? Like it can be kind of hard living with your, your co-founder. when like, I'm trying to talk to girls and I got a homeless man <laughs> sleeping in the living room. That was a good story. Dylan comes home with this girl knocks on the door i'm asleep i'm i'm on my phone on the living room floor she comes in and i didn't even do any of the nice platitudes i just i let out a Dude, oh, like a, oh <laughs> no you can't you can't see me like this and she left yeah. you walked her right back out the door i didn't even i yeah i i there was no can i give you that. one more smart I've got like three more smarts. This is great. I'm having a ball. I think I think we should treat these more like conversations. There's no well, there should be an agenda. But this came up the other day and I pitched it to someone. Also, I think you should do them when you have more time. My little office hours, way too much fun. There's oh, yeah? like little 20 minute slots. That's an interesting opportunity cost thing. Yeah, but but it's like fulfillment. It's super fulfilling. Oh, wait, it's wait, awesome let, to let meet me, new people. Do people listen? What are you are you giving advice? What the fuck are you doing? No, so like uh I did a few this past weekend. We just jammed on like what they're up to. Someone was like, didn't know how to proceed. Like they're an investment banker and they're like, you know, I, I feel like I have no time. So then I gave a little advice, but not really. We just kind of, I just asked open and open ended questions. That's it's fun. Wait, yeah. but, but this mutual friend, a kid I haven't seen since like fourth grade reached out and I was like, 20 minutes isn't going to be enough for this. He's kind of in the startup world. So I signed up uh, for an hour with him on just an afternoon. It was just way too much fun. It was an incredible It's talk. kind of like the podcast where it's like an excuse to connect with yeah. people you normally wouldn't. Yeah. Exactly. But it's not public. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's like more a private. Intimate. Yeah. That's a, and we had a fruitful conversation. He's stoked about Dunbar. He's got like fundraising leads if I need them. He's just a smart guy. And it was fun. It's, it's interesting to me. Well, I don't know about you. Uh, I can see you just being homeless for the rest of your life. But I, simplicity. I have this, I know, <clears throat> maybe it'll take me till I'm 40, but like I know millions of people will be listening to whatever we're doing. I think there's, like I, I'm very confident there's going to be a movement around just challenging every sort of norm and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll lead that. So I'm like, it's crazy that like now is your time to buy low. Like <laughs> buy low. Buy low. <laughs> we you got... could get a ninety percent stake in smart <laughs> nonsense with like three hundred dollars. I don't want anyone's money. I'm just saying you can take Belky's time. Oh yeah. And if the podcast is in Chicago forever, Belky's not gonna get kicked off. Nope. <laughs> this is You've his tried. studio. I keep crawling back. <laughs> this is my studio. I can change the locks. Hey, here's a good one. Uh this is where I was going because I'm doing these office hours and it came up. This, this thing you sent me about deciding where you're going to go for dinner. Do you remember that? Decide immediately sort of thing? Are you hungry? <laughs> no, I just no, got nervous so that we weren't recording. We're recording. Okay, we're good. <laughs> After all that, this has been <laughs> fruitful. For dinner, your average dinner, let's say you're going out to eat. It's like a two-hour meal, mm -hmm. hour and a half, whatever. Ah, but yeah. you spend 15 minutes trying to figure out where you're going. Whatever the times were, um, the point was you spend 5% of the of that time deciding where you're going to go. Right. And if you equate that to a 40 year chunk of employment, the, your productive years, age 23 to 65, whatever, 5% of that, if you were to decide where you want to go for 40 years, would be two years. Two entire years of no work, meandering, asking questions, asking people, where should I go? Where do you want to go to eat? Where should I? Um, and a lot of people don't do it. And the guy I was talking to has the fortune uh, and the privilege to be able to do that. But he's yeah. like, no, I got to put in my two years and then I'll be in private equity. But I know I don't want to do <laughs> private equity. So the, the kid I was talking to this morning, he works, uh, I want to say McKinsey in China. And he's, I was like, he's like, yeah, dude, just like disillusioned with corporate life. Like no one cares about you. Bummed out. and. I'm like, well, leave. He's yeah. like, well, it's like two or three more years. I get all these perks and benefits and stuff like that. And I'm like, dope. But I mean, my life's kind of dope too. Yeah. And like, I'm having a lot more fun than it sounds like you are right now. He's like, he's literally is like, dude, tell me about your life. I just want to like live vicariously. That's exactly through you. what this guy said to me. 
It's crazy. He's asking me questions like, how did that feel? And like, I, I, I'm like, ah, it is crazy. I think so many people, and I sent him the Kevin Kelly voluntary simplicity, which we should link again. Yeah. But it's basically like people think that after all this work to get the next best thing, to get the next diploma, that you're going to get behind if well, you take two years off in your 20s. That's okay. So what's interesting is, okay, like now I'm, I'm doing okay. And easy. See these sweat stains? I gotta take this off. <laughs> take it off. Oh, so mess. Hold on. Anyone? If you're I listening, know, I? I'm so Dylan's gonna sweaty. strip. You can't put my shirt on. You cannot. Put a jacket on. Go put your jacket on. I don't want to do that. All right. What no, were you I'll gonna just, say? It doesn't matter. Uh, Own it. Really Look at me. I'm Hold in a on. women's small. And he's gone. Hey, while you're gone, what were you talking about? So I can just kind of talk. No, no, pop. You're gonna stink up the green screen. You can't get that all wrinkly binkly. No. All right. Are you going to green screen you out? <laughs> green screen a shirt on. <laughs> like the green Jeff Barber shop. Yeah. Um What were you saying? What were oh, you saying? Oh, okay. So now now I'm like, okay, I'm finally doing okay and uh it's like that right after that, I felt more depressed than ever in my life. Right after what? Right after like, okay, yeah, Dylan, you know, you, you made it into a comfortable spot, whatever. Oh, yeah. Immediately after that, pretty much a week after, it was the lowest low. Yeah. It's like, yeah, there's a little high in the beginning, but then it's immediately gone and you're like, all right, now I'm just back now to normal shit. Just, yeah, you were, you've been working like 10 hour days, just kind of going through the motions, comfortable, you know? You're like, I need some, what smells? No, I'm not. I'm just, I, I keep sweating out of every pore in my body. Um, how am i doing i don't get it. why do i you, you got that's, some that's a little that's bit. a lot for you that's i don't know why i sweat so much okay here's the fact of the matter and here's the point I, for some reason I've, I've seen this go around like a million times on twitter this week but the, the notion that we're time billionaires right okay. a million is one second for the next 11 days that's a million seconds huh. but a billion seconds is 32 years or something Oh, yeah, so you can pluralize that. Yeah, for, and people keep quoting it on Twitter this week. I don't know. It's, not, it's nothing new. Mm. But we've I think we talked... No, we didn't talk about this on the pod. We talked about it on a run. Like, if you ask Warren Buffett, you ask Charlie Munger what they would pay to be time billionaires again, to mm. be our age, to have the freedom, to have the time, to have the opportunities, you can't put a price on it. So the two years, that's the thing. Like, right now, we graduated 2019, so we're like a year and a half in. We're still not even at two we're years. We're just getting started. Well, you haven't figured out yet, so you kind of, you actually need two years probably before something. Well, to be fair, I started Dunbar in March. That's like what I figured out I wanted yeah, to do I didn't in know. a year. Is it, pay, is it paying me? No, but that's kind of the point. But like regardless, you could. That's what I want to be doing. There's in no world and this workshop. You could go anywhere right now and I think get sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year without a big issue. Just sure. with the skills that you sure. have. So it's like two years. Everyone just does two years of wild shit. Granted, that was my problem this morning. I was thinking like, God, student loan debt, because I saw some Joe Biden like canceling student loan debt and I'm like, ah. Canceling it or resuming it? No, like a wiping out. I don't know. There was oh. this thing of like wipes out up to 50,000 or like some, I don't think it's going to happen, but um, just like the idea of student loans, like it really drags down everybody. If mm -hmm. you're trying to do two years, but you have all these expenses in the background, like our friend Binky, God, why is Binky not here? Right. You just can't, you can't do anything when you have that much in student loans. So that's you're the, trapped. That's the craziest thing though, is the people that are complaining aren't those people for some odd reason. I don't know why. I don't know if it's envy. That's because, here's why. Happiness equals expectations minus reality. Yeah. Their expectations were like, once I make the money, I'm going to have made it. I'm going to have all the girls. I'm going to have the coolest lifestyle. It's all going to be there. And then it's not. And then you get into like... Because you're subtracting reality, which is like the 16-hour days. Yeah, the reality is your life sucks. And you thought it would be dope once you made all that money. Mm. And yeah. It's What's the formula one more time? Happiness equals expectations minus reality. That came from a Tim Urban blog post. Oh, actually, it was... So just, if my expectations are zero, I have no expectations, 
Do I go negative with reality or? Oh, sorry. Did I do it wrong? I don't know. I'm confused. Reality minus expectations. Maybe that's it. That's a bummer because I really emphasized it. Yeah. And it sounded really good. I, I haven't really. Yeah. It's reality minus expectations. So my happiness, uh, five yeah. zero expectations. My reality is just pure happy. That's oh, bliss. fucking almost had it. Rewind. <laughs> okay. Pop. So what's the formula? <laughs> the formula is just either drop your expectations. No, like give we, them, we rewound. Oh, what's we the- rewound for you. <laughs> Did you like that? Did you watch the video of my thing of uh, the Seth Godin where we rewound re- rewound because you weren't acting? Oh, that was you? cute. Yeah, it was fun. That was cute. I like the way I smile. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> got the pearly whites. So happiness equals reality minus expectations. Right. Let me break it down really quick. Yes. So um, if you have zero expectations, much like I do, mm-hmm. then happiness equals reality. My reality is just it's it's sheer happiness. Now, if you have all the expectations in the world, you're just like, this is next year's going to be great. Two years down the road. I used to be like that. Um, my girlfriend hated me for that mm. because then it never lived up to that. And we were both unhappy anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm at 40 and no one's listening to my movement anyway. Anyway. But um, so if your expectations are huge, right, then reality minus a huge number is negative happiness and you're unhappy. So. That's part of the problem is I remember freshman year at Brown, I went into this class and I'm like, oh, it was kind of opportunity cost deep, but it was like, oh, this startup, uh, God, how do I phrase this? Basically, like I just assumed right out of college, everyone's making like $150,000 out of Brown. Oh, why do you guys do that? Ah, Belky is just people the a reason to watch human the video. Being. No. Yeah, because yeah, if it smells bad enough, you're going to come and just, where were you going? My point is like my expectations, I was like, I got into Brown, immediately out of college, 150000 comfortable life, going to be happy, going to be awesome. And it's, it's just not the case. Like some people, yeah, it's the case. They make far more. But for the re- majority of people, it's, it's hard to get that number. Like just my expectations were like super inflated. And then I was just like, all right, deflate the fuck out of these. Mm-hmm. Bring it back down to somewhere near reality. And then. Oh, that's the trick. Just, just be somewhere near reality. Somewhere near. I don't know. Or have no expectations. Like I didn't have any expectations for the, the podcast. I kind of did. I'm like, oh, I want this shit to grow. That's true. Then, like we just did it. And I was, so I was sending uh, to a lead of ours. Apparently the agency's dead, but I'm still going to sell it because I need some money. I'll do the work. <laughs> hey, whatever. yeah, you run the thing. Um, I'll teach you everything. I sent him our first video that was published, which was episode 14. And then to compare that with episode 74, which I think was Ryan Beery. And it's am- astounding the difference. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. You and can- if this was your expectation, you wouldn't have been happy day one doing the podcast. And now here we are. And it's, it's too smart. Now so. this person that we're pitching is going to be like, oh, my expectations are so... Actually, we can deliver on it, though. We can deliver. That, there you go. And yeah. we're happy. So I guess people, you know, I, the only people that listen... I don't know who the fuck listens to this, but if, I you're will. Doing, if you don't have debt, you're doing well. We've said this before, but just like take that little analogy of like finding the restaurant. 5% of your time should be finding a good one. Five percent of your time should be finding a cool career. Yeah, and the deal is, the deal is, I'm also reading vagabonding about mm-hmm. like long term travel, like long long term travel, taking sabbaticals and stuff. Um, let's say you do some long term stint, put that shit on your resume, and also put all mm-hmm. of the real world skills you learned. And he says like either mm, the resume your, is dead. your perspective, the resume is dead. It. Let's talk about that in a second. Either your prospective boss is going to be super impressed. Or they're going to be a little bit envious. and that's So here's the thing, right? The resume is dead. Really quick. Un- well, what's your thing about? Mine's about a resume. Kind of. A, we'll see if they connect. My thing is, right now, you get so many Johnny Wontons that are going and applying, and they're all the same. They all have this yeah. stupid same resume, and no one reads them. Like, I, I heard you and David talking it yesterday. Is, mm. Okay? It, it's all visual. No one actually reads it. They have, like, five seconds on average to scan through. I've... I ask for resumes. Like right now we're hiring. I always ask for them, but I never really pay attention. The only thing I look at is like, how pretty is this resume? Yeah. And then so literally nothing two else. Two things. I, I saw this interesting thing about your resume should try writing it a, as a biography. A one page biography, like literally a story. Tell a story. Maybe this was from Seth Godin. I can't remember. And at the end of it, you can say like, and then Henry, speaking hypothetically, and then he started 
uh, work at Smart Nonsense Podcast. He crushed it. He hit every milestone. And you can do some humor stuff. The pitch deck with David. Um, I will caveat this with he's putting together a really nice pitch deck. Um, so so what the, the plan was for, for me to put together a, like an internal pitch deck to make sure we're all aligned. And it answers all our questions, market size, problem solution, competitors, all that stuff. And mine was super artistic, super minimal, one word, one number. Like you have to present this thing. Mm. And I'll show you, or maybe we can put it in the yeah. show notes or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dave was like, nope, no, 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 no. This is not corporate enough. It's too playful. Um, you need more like text. We need longer bios. And then the kicker, that, that could all be true. You know, I told him it depends on the audience. Fair enough. Uh, do whatever. Um, the kicker was he said, yeah, we would put together these 40 page pitch, deck at, pitch decks at work. And my boss would just flip through it. He wouldn't actually look at anything. Mm. And I was like, I, I, I said it. I said, but is that the problem? Is the problem then that it's just all text and it's not interesting enough that, you know. Um, That's what I love about uh, our generation. Let's call it Gen Z and whatever's below us is we don't give a fuck. We or like some people do. Some people just play into these crazy, stupid societal shit. That's, from I should before. say like he's more formal than most because of his background. Right. And, and it's good. To- it's definitely helped. Like I love uh, Erica, for example. She edits she's our main lead editor. She's super organized because she came from a more corporate style background. It has its perks. But there's certain aspects of just like creativity standing out. What I was saying mm-hmm. before is like everyone's doing the same corporate shit. So you unless you literally went to Harvard or like you have some like crazy accolades on this that just like you won Intel shit, you, you're not going to stand out. Everyone's roughly the same. The way you stand out is do something. Take a risk. Make it polarizing. Don't put any graphics just put like i don't know what the fuck you did but do something that's just wild some people are gonna love it some people are gonna hate it the same in dating that we always say is like you're not gonna get noted i guess business too is like the worst thing in the world is to just be average average well and and because i'm thinking like andreessen horowitz they get so many pitches and everybody can put bullets on a slide um so like dare we like take a chance here and and go crazy why don't Um, why do you even what if you didn't even do that? You just made a video instead of... Yeah, some shit like that. It's just... Like, I, I like that. It's pretty... It reminds me of Star Wars. Hmm. But, like... It's just... No, it's, this it's, is how you it's, do that. It's, it's it's personable. This is the company acting like a person. Oh, hey, you should... Uh, you should have screen recorded that. We'll, we'll put the pitch deck up in the video on YouTube. But... Mm, I don't know. I'll, I'll uh, screen record this. What were you going to say? Whatever you want. Um... Because I don't know if this is going to be well. I think to the like I just love the little creative aspect of okay. How does our pitch deck stand out? One, make it cool looking. But two, what if we made a video of you? I don't know. It, it could be a YouTube video. He really hated and just the, this. And I can it's get a behind win, that. Win, 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 win. I just it was playful. Yeah, uh, it's just it. And that's the thing. You're taking a risk. It'll probably flop. But otherwise, you'd have zero the chance. The thing is. Otherwise, you'd have zero chance. Yes. The thing is, if it doesn't flop, it's a smash success. Yeah. And you found it. Sorry. That's continue. the risk you take. And now they're like, if it is a smash success, they're like, these people, they know how to market. They know how to just appeal to a new generation. So I'm th- that's just what I love. It's like, figure out a new, unique angle. Mm-hmm. That's how you stand out today. We, we said it a bunch. People are going to be fed up. But like, it's just the truth. There's... You go explore it's, it's some wacky it's, shit. It's the information age, right? Like, and like I said, anyone can take that pitch deck I just did and put it into neater. Again, to give credit where credit's due, David's putting together a really nice pitch deck. I think it's a good compromise. Oh, between, you're doing? Well, he's taking mine and making it more corporate. Okay. And I told him too, like, let's let's give it to six potential VCs or like friend VCs that can just take a look for us and see which they prefer. Um. The problem with mine is like you can't just send mine off to someone and they'll understand what's going on. You literally have to guide them with your words and tell the story. That's what, what if, I love to do. That's that's what I do. I just make a fuckload of TikToks about this. Like TikToks are cool. Like you even sent me like some dude's fucking like uh, what's that called when you shove shit in your lips? Like, what? Uh, Lip like, injection? Um, Botox. It was like a Botox place or some like surgeon something and he made like a little tiktok to that oh the dance body yada 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 that has been just 
playing through the house. So that's the thing, though. Like, Kirby, I think Kirby you could do it. something really cool with that. Like, what if this is the new wave of pitching to investors is you make TikToks about your business. And it's like, oh, here's this slide, Kirby. but in TikTok form. We found a female founder this morning on TikTok. She's creating something awesome. We're like, oh. And then worst case scenario, you're just building hype because if you're making good content, then it's just like, all right, well, there's this buzz. Dude, TikTok is everything. I know. I'm thinking about in terms of growth. TikTok for this. I don't, I don't want to watch TikTok. I just like YouTube. It's YouTube's so shareable. Mm. Yeah, but you, it's so much easier to grow on TikTok and to be put in front of a lot of people. Mm. Yeah, doesn't Addison Ray have like 70 million people or whatever? Probably. Charlie D'Amelio's got probably 100 million. Uh, I, we should have those like, are um, different beasts like an energy level barometer <laughs> on the side that's just like uh, <laughs> at minute 54 and then it came back <laughs> and then... but all right that's, that's the thing. a hodgepodge i think well, can we, we can we take away this what I do we think got people got to take their own takeaways and let us know <laughs> we're gonna do all the work for them we got spoon feature? We talked about Call Her Daddy and Seth Godin and the gambler fallacy and where you want to take the Smart Nonsense podcast agency or double, triple, quadruple down on Smart Nonsense. Okay, here's, here's the underlying oh. theme. Stand out. Stand out. All those podcasts did it. We're trying to do it. You stood out with the letter to Seth Godin. Hmm. Uh, you got to stand out in the world. Dabble for two years. That's how you stand out. Wear a fucking green right. screen. Let's get wear out a here. girl's stand out. running. Yeah, right. Outfit. Right. That's how we ended this podcast. You're wearing a green screen. Go subscribe <laughs> on YouTube. I think you search Dylan Jarden, right? Or do you search Smart Nonsense? It's under Dylan Jarden. If you have any like questions, brands. you can always email Dylan Jarden at smartnonsense.com. No, it's not it. You don't even know the plugs. Dylan? Dylan at Smart Nonsense. I don't think anyone has. We don't do the plugs. Hey, no, it's funny. I know Smart Nonsense, or what we talk about is entrepreneurship stuff. So what's funny? Well, that book I mentioned a while back, I'm like, hey, I'm going to buy anyone a book that wants this book. I don't even remember what it's called. Oh, Johnny it was Johnny Bunko. Bunko. It was Johnny Bunko. No one ever hit me up. Yeah. Your editor did. Yeah. One of them. That's fine. Wow. Well, that's it. I'm probably going to go to bed after Wait, this. Wait, so is what you're saying don't email you because no one did one time? Well, they'll start emailing me now. Come on, I want to talk to Leave somebody. Leave a review. Let us know how we're doing. Leah, thanks for listening. If yeah, you're just the number one, the truest fan. That's it. I should mail this to her. <laughs> she doesn't want that. She... Thanks, All guys. All right, deuces.